it just feels amazing. It's like, I mean, my hands were formed on this neck, so. I'm studying with Dale. He passes this thing on to me. He introduces me to Jim Hall. I take lessons with Jim Hall with yeah. this guitar, and I took some lessons with Johnny Smith with this guitar. You know, I was in New York for the first time with this guitar, then moved and Boston. The first trip I went to Boston, I had this guitar. Yeah. Then I moved back to Denver and basically, you know, I lived alone in a small apartment and just practiced yeah. all day with this guitar. I taught in a music store, Gordon Close's Melody Music. I taught in the store mostly, I wanted to teach jazz, but I was teaching like mostly little kids. This was in Denver? Yeah, and, and I was so out of touch with, I mean, you know, a little girl would come in with her mom and and I'm like, man, you gotta check out Charlie Parker, you know, and I'm like, I was so not the right person to be teaching these kids, you know. So much stuff happened with this guitar. Yeah. Jim Hall had his hands on it, Johnny Smith had his mm -hmm. hands on it, Kenny Vaughn had his hands mm -hmm. on it, um, Dale Bruning, came from him. So then I, the mid 70s, 75, I moved to, I left Denver. I finally, another guy I met, Mike Miller, another guy, guitar player who lives in LA, was a big influence on me and memories of playing this guitar with him. And, yeah. Uh, but, but so, I moved to Boston, still playing only this guitar. Yeah. I so after a couple of years of being in Boston, I, I I got an SG. I found an old SG for like Gibson SG for yeah. two hundred dollars or whatever it was, and started playing that a little bit more. And then I moved to after it was nineteen seventy eight. I moved to Belgium to play in a band and. Right before I left, I said, um, I think I'll just sell this. I just stupidly, I was so stupid. I sold it. There was a little tiny music store, I don't remember the name of it, in, the, in Harvard Square in Cambridge. You have to walk down the stairs and it was just a little, and I went in there and I sold it for like $400. Wow. And I was glad to have the $400. You know, I kind of had sold all my stuff and I was yeah. moving to Europe and I had my SG. So I moved to Europe, and almost as soon as I got there, I was like, oh man, why did I, I should never have <laughs> sold that guitar. You know, thinking of all the, yeah. all re just even then, I'm thinking, wow, I got this from my teacher, and yeah. I should never have sold it, you know. And I really regretted it, you know. But then I kind of went out of my mind, and stayed, I mean, I, it, it, I, whatever, I got, you know, I met my wife. I, yeah stayed over there for a year I came back to the States and then I actually went to Boston to see even if the store that store was gone you know the, in the last few years since computers you know, every once in a while still like I wonder I'll put in because it's so if you put ES 175 with maple neck or something I yeah. thought maybe it'll show up or something yeah. but no nothing ever I just kept every once in a while every year so I'd kind of yeah but so then, my mom died a few years back. Yeah. And when I was going through, I had to go and clean out her house and stuff and, you know, finding whatever stuff of my old stuff that was left in there and stuff. Yeah. And I found a little piece of paper that had the serial number of this guitar uh -huh. on it. And, um, so I just kept that. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So I, I, it was, at least, then I also knew that it was made in 68. It was, it's a 68 guitar. Yeah. Um, so 
I just kept that piece of paper and I had it sort of up on my desk, you know, yeah. and then, so in Seattle I have, do you know Danny Hoffer who works for, he works for Gibson. He, he's like, uh, I met him long ago, just he's, he's a great guitar player and he, he now works for Gibson and I was hanging out with him and we were just talking about you know, like he said, "Oh man, I had the Les Paul when I was, 50, you know, whatever the stories yeah. about all the guitars that yeah. got away." You yeah. Know? And and I'm, so I told him the story about, God, I wish I had never gotten rid of this guitar. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And I gave, and I thought, wow, he works for Gibson. Maybe I'll just give him the. I gave him the serial number, mm -hmm. not thinking I'd get the guitar back, but thought maybe, oh, maybe he could talk to somebody at the factory, and maybe they would remember the time period when they made it or yeah. you know just sort of putting it out there yeah and then but then just a few weeks ago I was in San Francisco and I get this message from Danny and he says Bill I, I think I might have found your guitar <laughs> and it he found it he, he was it was on Facebook I think he saw it on a Facebook uh, post from Thunder Road Guitars mm -hmm. in West Seattle and it was just a, a month, yeah. yeah, a bunch of guitars, and he, because of my description of these odd features, yeah, he he sort of it drew him in, and then he, he actually, I guess he, I don't think he went down there, but he called him up and he gave him a serial number, and it was the ser matched up, yeah. So I he called me, and I just immediately <laughs> called them and told him don't say I got you know wait till I get home I want it you know no matter what and yeah. I hadn't even seen it if it was but then what's really amazing is it's exactly no no one put a Floyd Rose on it or a, <laughs> or cha or painted it or broke it or amazing. it's been you know it's been played played a lot and it's got all the you know checking and you know it's it's a lot older than it was, you know. I'm talking. It was 37 years ago when I last had it, but but nothing's been altered at all. It's all, the same pickup that Dale put in it, the knobs that I put on it, you know. And it's I cannot believe it. 